everyone. No sparklers today. I ordered some chemicals that, you know, the government probably stopped somewhere on the way. Because, you know, they're kind of explosive. Hmm. Who to thunk? Anyway, we're going to get to it next week, I promise. Well, at least if the chemicals get to me in time. But this week, we're talking about robots. Anyone who's heard my audio podcast, This Week in Science, will know that I have a fascination with robots, specifically the idea of world robot domination. Why would I find something as obscure as world takeover by robots intriguing? Well, for one, robots are everywhere. Research and development are putting robots into all the places you thought were safe from robotic influence. Thanks to government funding, there are now robot planes, boats, cars, and even insects. In our daily lives, we have accepted robots into our homes and workplaces as vacuum cleaners, lawnmowers, pets, and nurses. Yeah, there are even robots in hospitals running around dispensing medicine in place of real nurses. So far, we haven't been able to advance the field of artificial intelligence enough to allow robots to perform more than design-specific sets of behaviors, but a quick look at the advancement of robots in pop culture suggests that we are driven to create humanoid robots to breathe life into inanimate objects. The term robot came out of a short story by Carl Capek in 1918. And it was again used in his play Rossum's Universal Robots in 1921, in which, surprise, robots destroy humankind. The word robot comes from the Czech word roboti, meaning forced labor. But the idea of creating artificial life can be traced back thousands of years to stories of gods and animating statues in ancient Egypt and Sumeria. The 13th century brought automata built out of clockworks, and in the 20th century, robots as we know them burst onto the scene. Just a few years after Capek's play, the 1927 movie Metropolis featured a humanoid female robot named Maria. The 30s had the likes of Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, and Superman fighting against tin can robot villains. In 1940, Isaac Asimov wrote I robot in which robots actually coexisted with mankind and from which we got the three laws of robotics. In the 1950s, we met Gort in The Day the Earth Stood Still and Robbie in Forbidden Planet. Robbie did go on to become something of a celebrity. Robot toys and cartoons became popular in the 1960s and by the 1990s we had met Robocop, The Terminator, R2-D2, C-3PO from Star Wars, Commander Data from Star Trek, Pris from Blade Runner, and the Fembots from Austin Powers, among many others. With robots becoming more and more common in everything that we do, I thought I would visit an event just for robots and their creators, the Robo Games, to see just where science and technology are leading us. Will it be domination or coexistence? anything specific about um, technology and the advances in science that have allowed people like you know normal citizens to be able to start building robots oh, it's clearly the internet has made a played a, a large role and so there's a lot of machining tooling equipment that's available where before it was only available to manufacturing companies it used to be very expensive to, to put together any kind of electronic controls and you can buy off-the-shelf things now that you don't even have to know what you're doing. I think that's really the biggest thing. It's just that it's, it's reached a point where economically it's feasible for just about anybody to do it. Science fiction seems to be playing a big role in the inspiration, but where do you see robotics and technology like this going in the future? The technology is becoming acceptable. And, you know, for, for a lot of people just thought, oh, it's far-fetched. But now it's happening. I mean, there's robots in the home. Clearly, we've got to that point where uh, our society needs robotics. We could not survive without them. In pop culture, we see robots that are very humanistic. Do you think there's some kind of a link between building robots and the human drive to maybe create life? I know that a lot of people assume that in order for it to be a robot, it has to be humanoid in, in feature. And the reality is that most times that's not going to be humanoid. It's a machine that's designed to do a job, and they do them well. These ones here were designed to tear each other up. The Robo Games were so awesome, I decided I had to go back for more on Saturday, and I can't wait to go back again next year. It's going to just be even bigger and even better.